Hello, my name is Elisa Rodriguez and this is Arianism Today. Today we're going to be looking at Raymond E. Brown and he is a very respected scholar. He has already passed away um, and he is talking about Christianity and whether or not the Trinity existed in the New Testament, in the Bible, and then he goes on to talk about the first century church. He is a Roman Catholic and he believes that God gave the church revelation after the New Testament about the doctrine of the Trinity. So because of, I'm sure, all of the research that he's found, and, um, the honesty of his heart, nothing, uh, as we're going to see, is even found in the New Testament for the doctrine. He says, nevertheless, and this is a quote here, nevertheless, in no New Testament passage, not even in Matthew 28:19 baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Spirit, is their precision about three divine persons, co-equal but distinct, and one divine nature, the core dogma of the Trinity. Greek philosophy, sharpened by continuing theological disputes in the Church from the 2nd to the 5th centuries, contributed to the classical formation of the dogma. If tradition implies that 1st century Christianity already understood three co-equal but distinct divine persons and one divine nature, but had not developed uh, the precise terminology, I would dissent. Neither the terminology nor the basic ideas had reached clarity in the first century. Problems and disputes were required before the clarity came. Precisely because the Trinitarian line of development was not the only line of thought detectable in the New Testament. So, um, <clears throat> and if you don't know who Raymond E. Brown is, it behooved you to find out who he was, um, just to know who we're speaking about here. But the interesting thing that he says, he admits that nowhere's in the New Testament, nowhere's in the New Testament, does it even teach the doctrine of the Trinity. And he says, not even Matthew 28, 19. Now, it's amazing that this is coming from a Trinitarian because he's admitting, though, he's and this is what gives him credibility when he sees something that's true. He's going to admit it, and you can see the honesty in this man's heart. Yeah, he's a Trinitarian. Yes, he's deceived. He doesn't know actual what the you know actual the truth, but he sees from the facts themselves that in the New Testament there is no doctrine of the Trinity, not even in Matthew twenty-eight nine. He says on, and these are the, some amazing things that he says. Um, he says that um, Greek philosophy sharpened. By continual theological disputes, disputes in the church from the 2nd to the 5th centuries contributed to the classical formation of the dogma. Now he's saying that it's Greek philosophy. Jesus is Jewish. And I'm sure he's not coming from Jewish philosophy when he comes to uh, talking about God and everything else. It would be, you know, it needs to be Jewish philosophy. But he's saying that Greek philosophy, that that's where the doctrine of the Trinity comes from. Greek philosophy sharpened by continuing theological disputes is what made the doctrine of the Trinity become what it was. He's saying that it's the battling and the fighting you know, amongst the church that made the doctrine of the Trinity come forth. Then he says, if tradition implies, now that's tradition to me is just the passing down of the story from the church. If tradition implies that first century Christianity already understood three co-equal but distinctive divine persons and one divine nature, but had not developed the precise terminology, I would dissent. So if you watch the video before this one, you understand that the word homoousian, homoousios, did exist back then, but they chose not to use it for their doctrine. And uh, Raymond uh, Brown is saying that if tradition, if church tradition is trying to tell the narrative or you know, cast the story or the history of the church as though they knew the doctrine of the Trinity, he would dissent. That means he would oppose that doctrine, that tradition. So the important part that I believe is, is that he says the first, that first century Christianity, he didn't say the apostles. He didn't say the apostolic fathers. He said first century Christianity. And if you think about it, Jesus was born obviously at zero or negative three, uh, depending on what you believe. And Everything that Jesus did in his adult ministry was in the first century. So he's technically saying that even Jesus did not have the doctrine of the Trinity. That's an amazing statement. And the apostles did not have the uh, the doctrine of the Trinity. And the apostolic fathers did not have the doctrine of the Trinity. That's what he's saying when he says first century Christianity, which is amazing. Um, and then he says that 
that the Trinitarian line of development was not the only thought the only line of thought detectable in the New Testament. He's saying that there were some other things that could have, it could have been. It could have been Trinitarianism, or it could have been a whole number of things. And one of them is Arianism. It could have been Arianism, or it could have been Trinitarianism. There's not too many doctrines that fit into the New Testament. Arianism fits into it perfectly well with no further explanation. Trinitarianism, you need to imply a lot of Trinitarian thought and bias in there. Um, and then, so... This is this is um, the truth. I mean, I believe that this man was seeking for the truth and he saw that he had to admit Jesus, the apostles, apostolic fathers did not have the doctrine. And that, my friends, is amazing. So what are we searching for here? What are we doing with all of these, you know, searching for these apostolic fathers, searching through these scholars and seeing what they say? What are we looking for? We're looking for the truth and we're seeing the truth has been admitted to, but we haven't been able to connect the dots. This is like, you know, a Sherlock Holmes thing where we're trying to find out what's the truth and we're finding bits and pieces of the truth and we're finding out we might have been duped into believing that the Doctrine of Trinity was real when in all along it may have been Arianism. Thank you. You guys have a good night. Bye.